Hey guys, welcome back. So with us continuing the Venom series, we return to the race to save Bren Waters, the host of the Toxin Symbiote. And for the most part, we're just gonna dive into this instead of doing the huge recap at the beginning. So if you're new and you need to get caught up on what's going on, I have the full playlist down in the description. But along the way, I will be pointing out how a number of things that we see here point back to the larger picture throughout the course of this, because it's also in this issue where the God Carnage story begins to bleed into the events of the current Venom series. And we all know where that's going. So with that said, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so picking right back up from our last talk where we saw Widow and Dylan take Bren's father Oscar in hopes that they could talk to him to get more information about what Alchemax is hiding and get him to hand over that information to No Name before it's too late and they kill Bren. Cause at the time we saw that their conversation was being peeped out by a sniper. And now when we come back, this sniper is taking the shot and it's aimed right at Oscar. But fortunately with them facing the window, they're able to move him out the way just in time. So Widow calls back her symbiote, which was holding Oscar before and she suits up. But right away, Dylan just goes out the window and he goes after the shooter while telling Widow to stay back and keep an eye on Oscar. And right here, Dylan just makes his way from that window to the next rooftop frighteningly fast. And it just reminds me of that one moment in the Spider-Man 2 game that gave us a really good look at how Venom feels about shooters. Because for a moment, I almost believed that this sniper either played the game or saw that too. Because as soon as Venom gets there, she injects Traxic into her system, which is a non-lethal sedative that'll put somebody out for eight hours straight because <laughs> she knew it was a wrap and she ain't want to feel nothing. But even more so on her part, this was a tactic to avoid painful interrogation because after seeing her face, Widow recognizes her. And this woman's a government mercenary who Widow undoubtedly knows is not a part of No Name, which now begins to stir up the confusion because the new question is why does the government want Oscar dead? And it's a question that he clearly has the answer to because because regardless of him telling Venom and Widow that he doesn't know where the file is that No Name wants, he is willing to help them for the sake of saving his son Dylan. But before they even take the time to go looking for that file, Venom tells Oscar that he needs to talk because the government wouldn't be trying to kill him if he didn't know anything. So from here, he goes on to tell them what he knows. And it's a story that we were given part of in the previous issue because a while back when Alchemax chemicals spilled into the waterway of the local town, killing dozens of people, most people didn't know that the project was funded by the government through the Life Foundation. And this chemical was designed to make a person an undesirable symbiote host. And Oscar heard rumors throughout Alchemax that Carlton Drake personally allowed this leak to happen. Which right there, we can pretty much say with certainty that Carlton Drake used Alchemax to make this leak happen in order to push forward the agenda of the absent throne, which ultimately is being led and manipulated throughout time by Meridius who currently has a short leash on Carlton Drake and the Life Foundation. So keep in mind, anytime we see Carlton Drake do something, or in this case, not do something, he's following the orders of Meridius, who like we've talked about before, he owes his life to. So right now with Oscar just mentioning this rumor, it seems very subtle at the moment, but it's very much a part of what's happening in the larger picture. But he also goes on to say that he wasn't too alarmed by this because Oscar thought this was no different than the US putting fluoride in the tap water. He didn't think it was going to cause much harm, but Widow reminds him that it did and dozens died as a result. So going forward, the plan is just to get Oscar back to his office so that he can find the file that confirms the chemical leak, which not only holds Alchemax accountable, but also points the finger back at the Life Foundation, Carlton Drake, and the government as well. And right now, Oscar is not even concerned about that. He just wants Bren to be safe. So for a moment, he's like, none of that stuff about the leak matters now. They have my son. And Widow just tells him that it definitely matters because the government's out there trying to clean up their mess. And right after this, we head over to the Toxin Symbiote, who's currently undercover and hitching a ride with the guy from the No Name group who initially attacked him and Bren as the group make their way back to their base, which is where Bren is at right now. And also along the way, since Toxin has this temporary host, he's also regaining his strength in the meantime. But on their way back to the base, the No Name group gets stopped by a separate group of government agents who, as you may have guessed, these guys have come here to do some cleaning. And when I say cleaning, I mean get dirty, because right away these guys just wet up the van. And while this is happening, Widow's explaining to Oscar what she meant about the government cleaning things up, because for them the only way to clean a specific mess is to kill everyone involved. 
That includes him, his colleagues, no one, and even the hostages that they're holding right now. Which for Bren, this is now taking things from bad to worse. Cause him and the other hostages are chained up in a pool that's being filled up with the same kind of water as the contaminated water from the Alchemax leak. So not only is the clock ticking before they drown in this stuff, but also the government's already made their way here. And like we saw, their intention is to kill everybody. That means No Name and the hostages as well. And right away, we see Toxin reach out to Venom, telling him that he's found where they're holding Bren, so Venom tells Toxin to hang tight, cause they're on their way, and that Sleeper will be out there with them soon too. And Toxin tells Venom that these guys that showed up, they just cut the power to the building, and they're getting ready to move in. So the live stream that was supposed to be broadcasting the death of Bren and the other hostages, it completely goes dark, which causes Oscar to panic, cause now they don't know how much time Bren has. But right here, Oscar tells Venom again that he doesn't trust him, cause he saw Venom on the other live feed when his friend was bleeding out and Venom tells him he was there trying to save his friend and at this point it doesn't matter if Oscar wants to trust him or not because right now they need to focus on saving Bren. So Venom just heads out making his way to Toxin while Widow and Oscar make their way back to his office so they can find that file. And meanwhile back at the No Name base, as the government's taking the No Name guys from earlier out of the van, we find that Sleeper's now caught up to Toxin as the two of them quietly take those two guys out. But mind you, as it stands right now, Sleeper and Toxin, they really don't know what's going on with the government stepping in here. So at first, Sleeper's asking Toxin, like, who are these guys? And Toxin just assumes, like, hey, you know, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Because he's not really sure either. And all they really know at this point is that they killed the no-name guys that were in the van. But as they look from a distance, and they see that these guys have managed to get no-name to release some of the hostages, and they're just kind of like, okay, cool, we're making progress, they're negotiating, and then the government just claps both of these hostages. And right after that, a huge explosion comes from the building, which right there tells Toxin and Sleeper everything they need to know. Because again, they didn't get the full explanation from Widow. So they don't know all the ins and outs of what's going on here, but what they do know is that these new guys that have showed up, they're killing everything. And right now, even though Venom told Sleeper and Toxin to hang tight, Toxin rushes in because all he can think about is saving Bren. And for a brief moment here, we kind of get a glimpse at the old school Toxin. You know, back when he was more powerful than Carnage, and it was a huge deal with him being the 1000th symbiote and more powerful than any symbiote before him, which I hope is something we return to at some point in this series. But nonetheless, that's something we just gotta wait and see. But right here, Toxin and Sleeper just get to slicing through these government mercenaries. But as they do, one of these guys yell, symbiotes, switch ammunition. And it's just enough for another merc nearby to switch out his ammo and take a shot at Toxin as Sleeper jumps in the line of fire just in time to take the hit. But as soon as this happens, black chains just wrap around this guy. Cause the last thing that Venom wants is for this dude not to feel this God slap that's coming. But as Venom gets here, Widow reaches out to tell them that something's wrong because the live feed has gone back up and No Name is broadcasting all of this while showing the world how the government's killing hostages and we soon find out inside by way of the same No Name guy who's been trying to have a conversation with Bren since the last issue. Cause we get this moment here where he's sitting poolside talking to Bren while he's getting ready to drown and just behind him other No Name guys are just getting hit with explosions and flying in the air. But it's right here where he tells Bren that No Name had an inside guy with the government so they knew this whole time that the government was close and if they went after Alchemax again that they'd show up. So it was part of their plan to lure out the government and expose them as well. So for that reason, him and a few others came here expecting to die alongside of the hostages just for the sake of their cause and broadcast the whole thing live. But right now, as Bren's being completely submerged in this contaminated water, Venom and the others are fighting through both no-name soldiers and government mercs to save Bren and the other hostages. But as you can imagine, the fighting part is costing them time that they just don't have. So Toxin tells Venom that he's just gonna go straight for Bren. So Venom tells him that he'll cover him. And right here, over the course of just seconds, so much happens. Cause also you have Widow who reaches out, telling Venom that Oscar has found the file and he's sending it through to No Name right now. And it goes through cause we see someone from No Name get it. And he's just looking at the file like, okay, cool. Alchemax sent it. I guess I'll just take Bren out the pool and go back to my regular life. As he's then shot in the back by a government merc. And after sending the file, Widow's looking at it. And she tells Venom that this chemical, it's some nasty stuff. And she doesn't think that it comes from Earth. And she lets him know, whatever he does, do not touch that water. And even though Widow's speaking through the hive to Venom, she's saying this in Venom's hive so everyone in the hive can hear it. 
But when we go over to Toxin, who's making his way to Brent, Toxin is not listening, because as a result of Toxin's heightened tracking ability, he can smell Bren taking his dying last breath. He can hear Bren's heartbeat slowing down, and he's not going to let anything stop him from trying to save Bren. So Toxin just jumps right into the water. In spite of it feeling like it's burning, he immediately bonds with Bren and gives Bren all the strength that he can muster. But immediately after doing this, Toxin goes silent. And right after Venom shows up, pulling them out the water, and Bren tells Venom what happened because Toxin saved Bren. But now Bren, after being exposed to this alien chemical, he's killing Toxin. So right there, Sleeper's like, heal the body, heal the host. Which then has Venom like, we need to take these guys to anti-Venom. Because right now, Flash Thompson's their only hope. So they end up making their way over to Flash's apartment, and the antibodies are able to help Bren, which as a result then help Toxin. But as they're resting up, Flash fills in Dylan about the recent situation with the Carnage symbiote returning to Earth, which we talked about not too long ago. And I also got that link down in the description, just below the like button, for anyone who's missed it or needs to get caught up. Because starting from here, we're slowly seeing the God Carnage story make its way into the Venom series for the build-up to that inevitable showdown between Carnage and Eddie that we're still a bit of a ways from. And I mean, hopefully we'll get to that before GTA 6 comes out, but we'll see. But right now, for those who have already read Carnage issue 1, or if you've seen the recent video already, at this point, Flash isn't 100% sure that this is Carnage, because at this time, he's still piecing together the mystery that we heard about in Carnage issue 1. But right now, we also hear the news in the background saying how the information on Alchemax has made its way public. So in a way, you could say that No Name got what they wanted in the end. But with that public information becoming an issue of its own, we also got the return of the Carnage symbiote. And Flash doesn't necessarily want to ask Dylan and the others for help, because the way he sees it, they're too young for this fight. Because what's coming is way crazier than what we saw in Extreme Carnage. And Flash already knows that they're haunted with the question, like, if they don't fight, who will? And as Dylan steps outside on the fire escape to get some air, Flash asks Dylan about his dad, Eddie. Like, throughout all of this, where's Eddie Brock? Which Dylan doesn't respond to, because if you guys remember, that question's kind of a trigger for him. And really, I don't blame him, because again, he's just a kid. And it's not fair to him that he has to go through all of this without his father. So going forward, as we continue our talks on the Carnage series, the Venom series is going right back to Eddie where I'm pretty sure we're going to pick up right where we left off, with Eddie crash landing in Meridius' garden. But eventually, all these pieces will come together. One day, while we're all playing GTA 6 on our PS5 Pros. Though, hopefully, I, I hope it's before that. <laughs> and so now, real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.